Okay, so first up, we have a story which is Bo Selector. Hilarious. Do love that. So this is RBS chooses loot. So this is RBS take a stake in the student-focused fintech. So Royal Bank of Scotland have taken a 25% stake in student-focused fintech startup loot. Uh, they provide a current account, prepaid debit card, controls and spending, and all sorts of good stuff for young people. Um, quite an interesting one, this, I, I think. Like, loot were probably... I think they were they founded about the same time as Monzo. I remember them. They were, we considered them like we, we we talked about loot a lot in the early days. I remember that. Like I think they were a bit before. Yeah, they were definitely there was some prior art for sure. They were definitely around before us. Um, and and I guess they you know they aimed at a very sort of specific niche in terms of what they've done for for students. And actually, I, I remember they had quite an interesting sort of distribution model around using uh, the student unions as advocates for kind of going out but that seems to have been something that a lot of other people have kind of caught on to as a smart way of actually getting acquisition but what do you guys see to this both in terms of i guess loot selling in terms of the things that they're doing but also rbs getting involved so heavily with a, a kind of quite a, a fledgling startup albeit not necessarily from an age perspective 25 percent is, is quite something it, it's it doesn't sound like a super passive uh, move for RBS. this sounds like something with rights and like something strategic in, in my opinion uh, so it's i think it's interesting oh no or is this really just um so i take the cynical so i work for a silicon valley vc fund so it, it, cynicism is unfortunately part of our, our, our worldview um is this just really the classic case of the grey-haired old bank trying to do something sexy to keep shareholders happy? Um, that's what it feels like. Um, I hope it isn't. I mean, RBS are, you know, Britain needs banks um, and um, we still need our old school ones because we still own a lot of RBS, if I remember correctly, as UK taxpayers. Um, but is it them? Are they just trying to be sexy? That's just, it just feels very much like it. I don't really see the strategic eness of it all. Is this the first thing Bo has like done under their own name though? Like we keep saying RBS has done this, but like, is this the first thing that like we've heard about Bo actually putting a stake in the ground? I, I think it's, in terms of something that's public, yes. In terms of delivery, no. I think it's unfair. I like the cynicism, but I think it's unfair to say that uh, RBS are desperately trying to be sexy because they've actually done some really interesting things, not least with us. Well, well yes, I, I didn't want to bring that up, but yeah. And, and it's meaningful stuff. So so I think that, that element is, is slightly... Um, but if, it's, if that's the case, why not just buy them out? I mean, it's no way near enough. I mean, if you really believe in something, well, the, buy the, the whole thing Well, the question is... I would, dis I would actually disagree with that because diversification is, is a sensible play. But for me, the interesting thing is that um, Loot was, was pretty cool and exciting when they started. I remember feeling extremely old when I first met them because their CEO was like seven. I think he's 24. Yeah, I know. It's like so he's 24 now. Bloody hell. Um, but, and, and he had a really cool business model and, and really focused and the app was beautiful before we got used to that. But it didn't... It didn't go where we thought it would go. And the fact that Monzo and Starling and, and, and those slightly more, slightly meatier challengers that would actually tap into the same market took off at the same time. I think the comparative growth is a very interesting factor. And, and to me, it would make sense to, to do that because I, I don't see it growing anymore on its own steam. Well, I think we're, we're seeing that across a number of sectors. You know, you have, let's say, the top six, top two or three are investable you know they're in the game they're in the race they're there if you're four five or six that starts to get a bit of a more difficult conversation like are you really going to go against these guys that are you know Simon's sitting here that growing you know stratospherically and if not then what's the play so we see things like um, scalable capital suddenly you know they're not nutmeg so they make their deal with ING and away they go and so is this loot uh, an RBS being a bit of a, a sort of a pairing that actually RBS has great distribution. Oh, totally. Uh, and Loot's not a uh, Monzo, Starling, Revolut, N26. You know, I mean, you, you go down the list. Where, what, who, what? Yeah. I, I had to Google them before this show. That's my embarrassingness. I think it's an interesting point you make about the the percentage rather than like outright just buying them. Because I, I think this, maybe this is this model maturing a little bit. You know, we've seen big organizations buy a thing and break it really quickly. But actually, maybe at 25% stake, they can uh, they can bankroll what they think is the seed of a good idea without to like smashing it up, basically. You know? There's no reason why loot couldn't become a feature in Bo. Um, 
I, I, there's, I don't, there's no reason why it can't be absorbed. Yeah, I, I don't think we know what Bo is. I think to, to almost to Simon's point, I tried googling it, but I didn't know how to type that funny character. It, <laughs> but it's it's an it's an interesting one that, like you say, if you're starting a startup, the first thing you don't do is buy another startup, which is interesting to sort of see uh, a, a fully bank rolled, not just because they're bank, but a you know a bank bank rolled uh, company making that as their first public step. You know, sorry. Yeah, I'm just trying to flip it around and a bit and, and relate to, you know, why would I want to sell 25% to a bank if I was lewd? And, and to your point, do they have a business model? Uh, or is the only game to really reach scale and then, you know, preach that you can eventually get to a business model? And I think that that might be what they're trying desperately to do here is to see, can we find some distribution here? Well, a good business model is selling the company, I guess, right? It could be, yeah. Well, let's hope for the founders of Loot that there's a lovely clause where when they hit a certain target, um, the re there's a trigger point for, a, you know, a more meaty, substantive real acquisition. Because this doesn't really provide any liquidity for the founders, I'd imagine, or the investors. And in many ways, is like, you know, it's that, that's what's disappointing. I guess, uh, as a VC and a former entrepreneur, I want to see our big banks actually having meaningful actions on entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial community. And so this feels, you know, a bit like, you know, no, it's nice they're involved, but come on, go all in. The VC says go all in. Who'd have thought it? <laughs> all right. <laughs>